Good evening, everyone, and welcome to tonight's executive speaker presentation, our last of the fall semester. It's wonderful to see so many of you here this evening. My name is Betsy Rosini, and I'm the Associate Dean at the Feliciano School of Business. And before I introduce Tony Carlino, who will present our speaker, Greg Collins, I have just a couple of housekeeping announcements. Since some of you have to leave for seven o'clock classes, um, Greg will end his formal presentation and will dismiss those audience members um, at about 10 to seven, so you can get to your classrooms on time. For those of you who can stay on for a bit longer, we will um, we'll, we'll, uh, have a Q&A session where you'll have the opportunity to ask questions directly of Greg. So I'd now like to bring up Tony Carlino, who is vice chair of the MSU Foundation Board and a successful attorney who has served by appointment on several committees of the New Jersey Supreme Court. Tony's also an alumnus who earned his BA in political science here at Montclair State before attending law school at Seton Hall. Um, so please join me in welcoming Mr. Tony Carlino. Hello, everybody. Uh, th th thank you for letting me stop. Ready you, you get to be a certain age, and not only you get two shots, but you get a booster on top of it. So, I'm not going to stand there if that's okay with you all. Greg Collins is a proud alumnus graduating with a Bachelor of Science in Accounting and is a terrific example of how Montclair State set the course for his successful career. Greg currently serves as the chair of the Montclair State University Foundation Board of Trustees. The Foundation Board, for those of you who don't know what it is, is the arm of the university that raises funds for scholarship. It's our mission to get people to donate money to the university to help students like some of you, I'm sure, attend college. Uh, I said earlier, and I, believe me, it's not about Carlino. When I came to school here, there was a gas station behind the student center. The student center was a bit of a different building. And I got a part of my financial aid package was I got a job working the gas station on campus. Uh, what we do at the foundation is raise money so people can get scholarships and, and come to school here. Uh, Greg is the chair, I'm the vice chair. Uh, and we've got some other foundation board members here. Uh, when it comes to marketing yourself, Greg has combined his skills and passions to excel throughout his career as an accounting executive and entrepreneur. Now here comes the pretty cool part. Uh, I thought I've done okay. Greg has really done okay. He recently served as chief financial officer and director of special projects for the Brick Education Network in Newark. For a large part of his career, Greg worked in the sports and entertainment industry. He held executive positions at Columbia Pictures and AT&T and served as chief financial officer. Here it comes. Chief financial officer for Stevie Wonder's business organization. How cool is that job? Really, it's Stevie Wonder. He, he, he also spent time as director of a New York-based certified public accounting firm, Konigsberg and Parker LLP was a partner at Mitchell and Titus LLP, the largest minority-owned certified public accounting firm in the country. He's a Montclair State guy. Greg can tell you more about his many career roles, but all I can say is anyone who starts out working for the Inter Internal Revenue Service and ends up working for a firm that represents professional athletes and entertainments like 50, see, I'm gonna say it right, 50 Cent, <laughs> D. Diddy, and Wendy Williams. How's that for a resume? He, did he send P. Diddy, Wendy Williams? How many people know who Wendy Williams is? See? Uh, most importantly, Greg will be the first to tell you how important your education is in life and to take advantage of as many opportunities as you can here at Montclair State. Uh, I will add one thing. Uh, Greg and I were lucky enough to get good educations. Am I okay here? Good educations here. But you know what's more important? He's my friend. And that, you know what, that's something you get here. I'll say it's a bonus, but it's more important than a bonus. You have lifetime friendships here. Uh, Greg's my friend and I'm gonna ask him to come up. Welcome Greg Collins, please. Thanks, Tony. Uh, you just covered the first couple of pages of my presentation. <laughs> so I might make it on time today. So, but thank you uh, again, Greg Collins. I'm proud to be the chair of the board of the foundation here and 
hope you get to learn a lot more about it. But today, we're going to talk about effectively marketing yourself. Now, one thing that Tony mentioned is some of the clients and people I've worked with over the years. And I would tell you that in some of the positions I've held, every position I've held with every client that I've worked with required me to know how to market myself, my business, the skills that I had, and be able to get to sell them services or sell myself uh, in order to work with them. And that's something that all of you in one way or another are gonna have to do. So that's what the presentation is about here today. And a lot of you say, well, what really qualifies you to, to, to speak to us about that? Well, first, like I said, I've had to market myself literally hundreds of times. And then secondly, now fortunately this is on Zoom, so somebody's watching, but this, I'm gonna tell you this, a couple of secrets I'm gonna spill today. I'm married 24 years to a beautiful woman who thought she was gonna marry Denzel or Will Smith or a tall dog. Don't laugh too hard about this, but I had to effectively market and sell myself <laughs> in order to have that position. So think about it. Now, one of the other things that, that I've done, and all this is gonna to tie together in a second though, is that I helped produce a music industry seminar for about 10 years. And we did it in, in the United States, all over the country. We did it uh, in Europe. We did it in, in uh, the Caribbean also. But it gave me access to artists or people that would be my clients over here. So some of the services that I've had to offer, and this, I, take, I want you to take particular note of this because I was an accounting major at Montclair. And one thing that I said to, to uh, uh, your director of your accounting program here, we're sitting in the front row, is that you'd be amazed at the number of different things that you can do just from, from understanding business and accounting, which accounting allows you to do. So I've, I've had to sell tax research and planning services, return preparation, strategic analysis, operational analysis, transactional due diligence, contract reviews. I've sold fractional CFO arrangements and a lot of forensic accounting work, given expert testimony and a business manager and theatrical production accounting, which is movie accounting for those of you that don't know, uh, represented people in tax matters, uh, tour accounting, and that's in addition to your normal financial services, including audits, uh, reviews, and compilations. And I've had to find ways to market these services. And I'm gonna tell you, some of these situations I didn't know anything about until the opportunity presented itself. And then I learned everything that I could and was able to sell myself as an expert in these different areas. Uh, now, Tony Carlino mentioned some of my clients and the list is, is pretty long, but you know, I would tell you that I've worked with like Puff Daddy, Bad Boy Entertainment, Alan Iverson, DMX, Buster Rhymes, Jill Scott, Flo Rida, he mentioned Wendy Williams. I work with DJ Paulie D from Jersey Shore, Master P, 50 Cent, G Unit, and many more. And believe me, every situation is different. So let's get started here. The American Marketing Association, I love this definition. Marketing is the activity, set of institutions, and process for creating, communicating, delivering, and exchanging offerings that have value for customers, clients, partners, and society at large. Pay special attention to the creating, communicating, delivering, and that have value. That's what marketing is. Now, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a person who's not always been considered well. So I put certain things in for my own benefit, and this is one of them. Guerrilla marketing, which is something that I've done most of my career, describes an unconventional and creative marketing strategy intended to get maximum results from minimal resources. Sometimes you've got to be ready to do what you have to do in order to get 
where you need to be. Guerrilla marketing. Now for the record, selling. Selling is a transaction where a good or service is being exchanged for money. It also refers to the process of persuading a person or organization to buy something. All right, I just wanted to get those out of the way so we know that we're on the same page and you don't think that I'm talking about anything other than actually market, even though it's gonna sound like that, sound like I am. Now, I would tell you that to be successful in business and in your careers, you're gonna to have to learn to market yourself and sell yourself. This applies whether or not you're looking for a job you're trying to advance in your current job. You have aspirations to be an entrepreneur. You're always gonna to have to sell yourself and it helps if you're able to market yourself, which makes it a lot easier to sell yourself. So I'm gonna give you what I consider some things that have helped me along the way, 10 points, simple, but if you put them all together, you'll find that they're effective. And along the way, I'll give you some ideas about how they've helped me. Number one, have a goal. What is it you want to accomplish? And the sooner you have a goal, the sooner you're going to get somewhere. Because if you don't know what it is you're trying to do, where are you going to go? And do yourself a favor and answer the question why you want to do it. A lot of people end up in careers that they don't like because they never thought about why I wanted to do this. And believe me, it's okay to do it for money. If the reason for doing it is I want to make a lot of money, God bless you, I've done that. Okay, but if it's because I really enjoy it, like I enjoy working in the sports and entertainment industry, it helped fit who I was. I was a musician as a youth. I also played sports, believe it or not. You might not believe it looking at me now. But, you know, I did play sports when I was young. Uh, so there were things that I enjoyed. They fit my personality and who I was at the time. So it really helped me to be able to do something that I love doing. Second thing is to develop a plan. And this seems simple, but most people don't have plans. Have a reasonable outline of what you wanna do, how you're gonna accomplish those steps, uh, uh, what's necessary to actually be able to do what it is you wanna do. I would tell you that lack of proper planning is a guarantee for failure. It absolutely is. And don't, don't get worried. In, all, in every aspect of my life, except for now, I've always had a plan. Wasn't always a great plan, wasn't always even a good plan, but it was a plan. But one thing that I was able to do is to make changes in the plan along the way when things were necessary. Have a plan, have a plan, be able to take steps and move forward. Get over your fear of failure. A lot of people have self-doubt. They're thinking to themselves, you know, I can't actually do this. Uh, I used to think the same thing, but then I, a lot of situations I didn't have a choice. I had to do it whether or not I wanted to or I thought I could. Get over your fear of failure. Stop complaining, oh, this person's gonna be in the way, this is, no. Get over your fear of failure. Stop procrastinating, I'm gonna do it next week, I'm gonna do it next year, next year I'm gonna, no. Get to work and do it now. There's no better time than now. Sometimes there's gonna be bumps in the road, there's gonna be hiccups. Don't let them stop you. Don't let anything get in your way and stop you from doing what it is you really wanna do and the things that you've planned. Uh, now, my next slide is important because it's a slide about people that you may know or have heard of who have been some of the biggest failures that you can possibly imagine, but they didn't let that stop them. Walt Disney, he was fired from one of his first jobs as a newspaper, at a newspaper because he was considered not creative enough. You gotta wonder what happened to the guy that fired him. <laughs>
you know, I'm, I like to look at positivity. So I hope the guy bought Disney stock. <laughs> you know, but obviously Walt Disney was still being creative long after his death. And what he built, you, you couldn't possibly have imagined the creativity involved. Richard Branson, I, I hope most of you have heard of Richard Branson. For some reason he liked that, that name Virgin, but you know, I don't think any of you have ever had Virgin Cola or Virgin Vodka or worn Virgin clothes, but he liked that name and now you have Virgin Airlines, Virgin Records and, and Richard Branson is going to Virgin Space. <laughs> so this one I love, Oprah Winfrey. You may, you may have heard of her. Fired from a job as a reporter because she was deemed unfit for television. Oprah Winfrey, unfit for television. You got to wonder what happened to the career of the person who fired her. It said, you know, Oprah, you're, not un you're unfit for TV. What happened to that person? Oprah is a multi-billionaire now. So, J.K. Rowling. She was a welfare mom when she started. She was told that her manuscript for Harry Potter was far too long for a children's book. And the children's books don't make money. A failure. One thing that all these people have in common, other than just being rich, because I know, I know you're sitting here saying, they're all really, really well. One thing that they have in common is that, uh-oh, they never gave up. Successful people never give up. Successful people believe in themselves and what they're going to accomplish, and they move forward. They never give up. I'm not a real technical person, but I was so proud of myself when I put these <laughs> little pictures and stuff. Anyway, I'm sorry. Develop your expertise. You gotta do whatever it takes to acquire the skills necessary to succeed. Now, you're in an MBA program here at Montclair, please finish, get your degree. Those, that's the important step in doing whatever it is you're gonna do, but develop your expertise. Uh, it's hard to be successful if you don't actually know what you're doing. And I was thinking about this, I said, what is the only profession I could think of that you can be successful if you don't know what you're doing? And I thought, politics. <laughs> I'll stop, <laughs> but you know, politics, you know, your credentials are very important. Uh, let me tell you, share a little story with you. You know, people often wonder how I got a lot of the clients that, that I was able to work with. Uh, one of the clients I worked with was, was Paul E.D. from Jersey Shore. And I was actually introduced to him and referred to him by 50 Cent. So that was already a, a, a good referral. But I knew he did not make the ultimate decision. His mother did. So I invited his mother down and come to New York to meet with me. And she came, she brought her sister with her. And I had these two women they came and you know, I was in a very nice building on 30, 39th and Broadway. So she liked that. It was in a very, you know, it was Times Square. She loved that. She came in, she came, my office was laid, you know, that was intentional. She came and she, she loved the office set. Then the, I came, brought the two of them into my office, sat them in front of my desk. Now, my desk had his back to a wall. They were facing my desk. Behind me on my wall was my degree, my AICPA uh, memberships, New Jersey Society in New York, all the different awards that I had won, uh, commendations from the state was on the wall. And what I did, I said, listen, I made an excuse to leave the room for a second. I left the room so they could read my wall. <laughs> that was 90% of the marketing done right there. The other, other part was just saying, this is what your son needs. This is what I could do for him. Your credentials are very important. 
I would tell you to also go to as many professional seminars as you can to stay current with what's out there. There's nothing worse than somebody talking to you today about what happened yesterday. No, talk to me today about what's going to happen tomorrow. Meet and consult with experts. If you do that enough, you never know when they begin to consider you one also. And that's important. Uh, develop your communication skill, written and verbal. You can be the brightest person in the world, but if you can't tell anybody about it, they'll never know. And you may get a job, you may have a nice desk, but you won't have a great fulfilling career. Be able to communicate who you are and know your value. It's important because if you know your value, you won't have a problem asking for that salary when you get to that job or you're dealing with a client. You know, I used to, when I had my business, I priced my, my fees high. And I look at you in a straight face and say, this is what you're going to pay me. And I knew what my value was. You have to build your network. You're not going to be able to do this alone. You have to build your network and you've got to get people talking about you saying how good you are at what you do. Um, people ask me, uh, how did you get to work with Stevie Wonder? Well, I taught a lot of seminars. Uh, people regarded me as an expert in the sports and entertainment and accounting arena. There were people that attended my seminar that worked for uh, his outside accounting firm. When they knew that he was looking for somebody to help manage his organization, the person they knew was me because they had seen me. Next thing you know, I'm getting a phone call. Stevie wants to fly you out to California to meet with me. The other, I had a mentor, uh, one mentor in my career, but he was like the greatest mentor, and he was Johnny Cochran. And Johnny would refer you business. Uh, he referred me a lot of business, and nobody ever went against what Johnny said. So Johnny called me one time and said, listen, we're going to go down to Louisiana. Get on a plane. We got on a plane with Donald Louisiana, brought me into a meeting with Master P. He says, oh, Percy, by the way, I want you to meet your new accountant. You can't get better when people know you and know that you're and important people, again, experts, people you work with, people in your communities. They know you know that you're good at what you do, and they refer business to you or they refer you in different situations. Join professional organizations. Don't just join and say, I'm going to pay my dues and, and be a member of the state society or or ask him, don't just do that. Join different committees. I was in the State Society. I was on the Board of Trustees for a number of years. I was the first Black Vice President on the Board of Trustees. And one of the things that I did when I was there, I always do something when I'm at a different place. But one of the things I did when I was there is I, I created, helped create the Sports and Entertainment Committee. And I created that because I'm working in that field. What better thing than to be chair of the Sports and Entertainment Committee. So all the other professionals who wanted to be involved had to join my committee. Again, they knew me. It's marketing. It's getting your name out there as an expert. I would also tell you to serve on not-for-profit not boards, nonprofit boards. It's a good way of meeting different people in different areas who have been successful in their careers, who get to know you in a, in a number of different ways. Get recognition for your expertise. Now, I'm going to tell you a secret, something I never told anybody. Close your ears, Colleen. I received an award as the Accountant of the Year for the National Association of Black Accountants in New Jersey. And I thought, oh, this is great. But then I realized that they did this on a national basis also. Wouldn't it be great to receive the award as the National Public Accountant of the Year? So I got a colleague of mine and said, listen, I want you to nominate me for this award. And by the way, here's what you're going to say. <laughs> she nominated me for the award. I got the award, you know, uh, as, the national, as the National Accountant of the Year. Get recognition for your expertise. It's important. I would tell you also, learn to work with everybody. I know each of us has our different prejudices and different things we don't like this. I don't like the short person, tall person, whatever. Learn to work with everybody. You never know 
who's going to be able to help you at some point in your career. And if they know that you're the kind of person that's hard to get along with or didn't like them years ago, well, guess what? You know, you haven't marketed and sold yourself effectively. Learn to share your knowledge. Uh, I would tell you to find ways to publicize your expertise. A lot of you, uh, when you are going to join different corporate organizations, one of the things I would advise you to do is make sure they do a press release. Do a press release so that everybody knows that you, you're in this organization. When you get a promotion, same thing, do a press release. You know, you move to another company, make sure the world knows who you are, where you are, and why. Uh, the, when I was at, uh, when I joined Mitchell and Titus, I had a small firm, I, I merged that into Mitchell and Titus, and I took over the sports and entertainment division. And we grew that practice from, I think when I, when I joined, they were making maybe 200,000 a year. And within a two year period, I grew it to where it was grossing $3 million a year. I was able to do that because I had a plan. One of the things that, I, that was in my plan was that there was a client of mine who had helped get out of a very tough tax situation. And she was a public relations person, one of the premier people in the entertainment industry. And I said, all right, I helped you, help me. She did a press release and put stories in almost every major magazine, uh, industry publication. I was all over the place. You know, and people knew and saw me as an expert in the industry at that firm and we can provide the different services that you need. It was all a part of my marketing plan to get information out there. And by the way, the picture that we serviced uh, at the time had me and in the backdrop was the World Trade Center, which is no longer there, unfortunately. But again, it, it let you know, Manhattan, New York, big time, you're there. It's important that you write professional articles also. Uh, Get your, get your name out there. If you're fortunate to write books, do it. But one of the easiest things to do is to co-write an article in uh, a journal with uh, one of your colleagues. You're not doing all the work, but you're learning a lot, learning what that person knows. It's one of the best things to do. Uh, media appearances, if possible, get out there. Let people know who you are. I've done so many media appearances, especially in, in the beginning when I was at Michelin Titus. Uh, one of the first things we did was to WFAN, the sports radio, went on and talked about the basketball players and what we're doing with them. The, uh, since then, I've done Fox TV, the tax update, did the Michael Basin, he had a syndicated radio show. I even did a couple of, uh, maybe two years ago, I did on Lenny Green's uh, Quiet Storm. Uh, some of you may not know, he does the Quiet Storm show in New York. WBLS. I did a session on finances and relationships. I don't know how I became an expert on that, but <laughs> it was simple. I said, give your wife all the money and no. <laughs> but uh, teach at technical seminars. I mean, it's, it's important that, that you do that. People get to know you as the expert. Uh, I've gotten more business from other accountants because they attended seminars that I've done and they figured that they couldn't do what I did. Now they could have, they really took the time and research and did the work, but my job was to make them know, think that they couldn't do it. So they needed to come to me. Um, you know, it says here speaking engagements, you know, but I'm sitting here at Montclair State University, so you might want that. Uh, be willing to give more than you receive. And a lot of people out there, they're out there and this is about me and what I can get. And I will tell you that I helped a guy, he was an insurance agent, he had a, he had a problem. He had a major tax problem and he had been with the, this entertainment accountant who couldn't help him. And then his father-in-law was an accountant and couldn't help him. Uh, uh, I helped him. Her situation, this guy had relationships with the executives up at G Unit. That's how I actually got into G Unit because he introduced me to the executive, some of the executives. So always be willing to help others. Do your research, find out what your target. If you're looking, trying to get a job, you know, 
but you can about that company inside and out. If you meet with a person, find out as much as you can about that person inside and out. Focus on what their needs are and prepare yourself to be the answer. When I finally did meet with 50, I understood enough about his business to know that he needed me to do an analysis of his business. I didn't walk in and say, I want to be your accountant. I said, what you need me to do is do an analysis of your operation. Good, bad, ugly. I did that, went through everything. And by the way, I told him, I'm going to do this and you're going to pay me a lot of money to do it. And he did. I did it and we sat and we met. He didn't like a lot of the things that I was telling him, but he appreciated that he needed to know those things. And then he said, you need to come on board and, and, and be our business manager. Sometimes you have to create your own opening. I, I read an article one year about, uh, in USA Today about how a lot of the celebrity-based not-for-profits were having all these problems and they just roast, they do that every couple of years, they just roast it. I said, wow, you know, I can help. I can get in there and do what I can. So I, I did work with a lot of foundations, uh, Ray Allen's, Rasheed Wallace's, uh, Puff Daddy's, you know, and then my big goal was to get with the Magic Johnson Foundation, which I did. Got in, turned things around. So the next year when they came back to look at some of these same operations, the ones that I worked with, uh, they, they all received passing grades. It, things have changed dramatically. Only thing that really changed is they got me and I was able to present a different picture there. So find out if there's anyone in the organization that can help you, anyone that can hurt you. you. You don't want enemies in the organization, you want allies. So if you find somebody that can hurt you, make them your ally. This one goes without saying to a lot of you here because you're in that generation, develop your social media self. Uh, enjoying different groups that are, that, that are on the industry groups that are on um, these different websites. now. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying to you that you need to get more booty pics on your website or anything like that. Think about it. Know what's on the internet about you. I mean, you know, come on, all these crazy things that TikTok has you doing. I mean, really, how does that impress an employer or a prospective client? It really doesn't. Now this goes without saying, but I like to put this in my presentations so you'll know. Stay honest. Don't lie about your qualifications. Your lies will come back to haunt you in the way that you really think. They can cost you everything that you think you have gained. So don't steal or commit other crimes. Uh, and be forthcoming. Everybody makes mistakes. Everybody make, makes mistakes. It's what you do when you find out there's a mistake that counts. So you be the person that hopefully discovers your mistake. If you're not, be forthcoming about it. Like, I don't want to try that. I made that mistake. And this is how we fix it. Or this is what we can do. Take that next step. You may still get fired from your job, but at least they know you weren't an idiot, you know, when they fired you. But be that person. And my last step here is, is Keep in touch, all right? That's the thing about marketing is networking. People in that business, in that industry need to know that you're still around, you're always around and they're seeing you and they're talking to you and they're, and they're exchanging ideas with you. And hell, they're going to lunch with you every now and then, they're going to dinner with you every now and then. Stay in touch with people in your business and potential clients and prospect, prospects. Now. Don't be a person that only calls me when you need something. Because I'm going to stop answering the phone. I'm like, oh, man, that's Colleen again. She needs, oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> she wants this and she wants, I mean, yeah, I'm going to stop answering the phone. You only call me, you're not giving me anything. You're not off, you don't have that kind of relationship. You're just trying to take and never give. Don't be that person. All right. And I, a lot of people will tell you, no offense for this, but grow up. It's a big world out there. You have to have professional maturity in order to make it. So these are my 10 things. Uh, I'll repeat them, you know, have a goal in mind, develop a plan, get over your fear of failure, 
develop your expertise, build your network and professional relationships, share your knowledge, do your research, develop your social media self, stay honest, keep in touch. Uh, therein lies my presentation. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. My name is uh, Dr. Nicole Coppell. Um, many of you know who I am. Um, besides being a professor here, I'm the director for the MBA program. Um, I'm so thrilled that we're here, really, in person, live. It's been, I know we had one other session this, uh, uh, this semester, but the truth is it's been a long year and a half that we've gone through COVID. So we're back and, you know, again, I think we're going to take the best of both worlds, the best of all worlds as we navigate our new normal and continue to be able to invite such amazing speakers and amazing opportunities. Uh, Dr. Rossini said something earlier tonight that I never thought about. She said that this is one of the jewels of our MBA program is having real, real professionals, real professionals. A, a business leaders coming in and speaking to us and giving us their jewels and their knowledge to be able to provide us with a learning experience and the and the necessary ingredients to go out into the marketplace, go out into the world and make something of yourself, something that will make us one day invite you to be standing up here and being our executive speaker for the next generation of MBA students. And I am looking forward to be able to have you here one of these days. But I need to spend this moment to, first of all, and <laughs> to thank you. I, I, I mean, each one of your slides, I was sort of waiting to hear what you were gonna say next because each of these were little, little pieces of advice, little mini suggestions, but can, Collectively, it really does give you a, a big picture of what you need to sell yourself. And really, it's our most important sale. This is, you need to chart your future. You need to figure out where you want to be and where you want to go. And you kind of gave us the roadmap here in, in, in giving us what you want to say. So I do want to take this moment to give you a, uh, a plaque or an award sometimes referred to as a thingamajig because we always don't know how to call these, but this is a award to let you know how much we appreciate uh, you coming here this evening and being able to share your experience with us. So this is a Thank you. quick gift for you. And while I have your attention, yes. everyone's attention here, I actually would like to take something. We haven't done this since... Uh, the very beginning, but um, we've been doing this now. We, we, we sort of recounted our timeline and I, I've actually been the MBA director for about, I'm going on about 12 years now. And we started this, you know, many of you were probably back in high school or such at the time, if not earlier. Um, but uh, we actually started this executive speaker uh, series back in 2012. And at the time we're like, can we really, develop what, what, what has been developed and be able to create this. But there was one person who really supported our MBA team and our uh, graduate program team who did it, and I'd like to say, did it pro bono, did it because it was something that he did want to do just to make a difference. And for the last, if I'm going back to 2012, almost 10 years now, uh, Jeff Monticelli has played an instrumental role in our executive speaker series. He does not know that we're doing this, but we actually have his own personal thingamajig award um, for him to thank him for all of these years. And he really has done so much and remembers every single detail to make these events as smooth, smooth as they are. And I publicly want to take a moment, not to just take away from what Jeff, what Greg has done for us this evening, but to acknowledge uh, Jeff's role in all of these years in, uh, per, in helping make our executive speaker the events the way they have been. So Jeff, could you come on up? Come on up. <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> Your own plaque for you. <laughs> 
<laughs> and I didn't have to say anything. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you. um, so um, I know we are at the point now, it's about a quarter to seven. I know some of you do have class at seven o'clock, but I know many of you have some questions because we have time for a Q&A. Uh, for a few of you who do need to leave and go cross campus, if you need to step out uh, now, please feel free to politely uh, exit your seats. But for the rest of you, we'd love you to stick around for maybe another 15 minutes and we can have a chance to actually ask some questions for uh, Greg and figure out what uh, more of his little secrets and advice for all of us. So stick around. We have some microphones in the front of the room that we'll pass around or is that what we're doing? And uh, we'll come to you with a microphone. So just let us know. Thank you, everybody. Hey, my name is Mahaley. I am an alum here at Montclair as well. Um, but I didn't graduate from here. I actually just stayed here for two years and moved on to another school. Um, but my question is about guerrilla marketing. What does that look like in this day and era? Well, it depends on what level you're looking at it for. But, you know, I've always thought, like, you have to be ready. If you, situations come when they come. You've got to be ready to say, all right, here's an opportunity. What do I have to do to make that opportunity work for me? Uh, one of the things that you should have already done is, is the general marketing where your name is out there and people know. Second thing you got to do is get in and look at the research and see what do I have to do to distinguish myself mm -hmm. so that this opportunity will be mine. Right. So, and, and a lot of times you got to be different. You can't come like everybody else. You got to be different. You have to do something to make yourself stand out. Okay. And I would tell you that the, th the thing that worked for me was the knowledge level. Okay. Coming in, being able to talk uh, as an expert, uh, being able to talk about the different things in my field. So you have to create the opportunity to get there. But when you get there, you got to know what you're talking about. And sometimes it happens really quick. Okay. So part two of that question is, um, have you ever had an experience where you were presented a project and you're looking at it and you're like, whoa, I need maybe a law degree to, to kind of um, implement this, pro this project? No. What? Because one thing that you gotta learn how to do and it's important, you learn that at the beginning, is stay in your lane. Mm -hmm. Stay in your lane. Offer the service that you can offer. My good buddy, Tony is a lawyer. He does, that's what he does. I don't do that. Now I'll, I'll go through your contract and I'll read and I'll understand the business aspects of it because I have the experience to be able to do that, but I can't write that agreement. And I, and I would advise you to get your attorney to bring your attorney in and, and be involved. But if you stay in your lane, you're going to be fine. If you go in somebody else's lane, you're going to have a problem. All right. Thank you. Hello. My name is Kyle O'Toole. And my question for you is, there's no question that throughout your career, you've worked very hard. My question is, is there any spe uh, specific situation that you can recall on where you had to make a hard decision? Not really. Uh, the, the, it, it, because I mean, like I said, if, you, if, you, if your foundation is based on your personal expertise, then, you know, as long as you're in your lane, you're gonna be okay. I would tell you that the easiest decisions I've ever made have involved uh, ethics. Because either you're ethical or you're not. And I'll tell you a little story. I got a, I was, I got a call one time out of the blue. Uh, this person says, hey, you know, I'm the corporate controller for the Wesley Snipes business organization. Wesley wants you to be his accountant. So well, I'm honored, you know, she says, she says but one thing, you need to come over here right now and meet with Wesley at our office. I said, oh, it's the middle of the day. I'm in the middle of so many, I had a day scheduled plan. I can't do that right now. So if you don't come here right now, you're not gonna be able to be his accountant. I said, well, I'm sorry, I can't do that. I can't drop everything and come. Would have been nice to talk to you, but I can't do it. They called me back. So, all right, we're sorry for approaching you that way. Um, Wesley still wants to talk to you. He still wants you to be his accountant, but he has one condition. So well, what is that? He says he doesn't want to pay any taxes. 
I said, well, I'm good at minimizing tax liabilities. I mean, that's one thing that I do. I said, but she said, no, no, you don't understand. He doesn't, he doesn't want to pay any taxes. I said, well, I haven't seen not one shred of your paper. I don't know what it's going to be. She says, no, she says, under any circumstance, doesn't want to pay any tax. I said, well, listen, I'm not the guy for you. You need to find someone. And he did find somebody, find somebody else and they both went to jail. <laughs> Hi, um, I have a question for you. You talked a lot about, or a little bit, I think the, the theme weaved through uh, your presentation of not being fearful <coughs> and being able to bounce back from rejection, failure, uh, some of the high points of some of the celebrities you, you, you featured there. Can you give us some tips on resiliency and how to build that up when you have been rejected or when there's been failure and how do you stay the course? You know, don't take it personal. It doesn't define you and who you are. Uh, it's just another step in the process. Don't get me wrong, I've had clients I got, that I've gone after that uh, I really wanted to do business with and was rejected. Queen Latifah, I'm like, come on, we from the same place almost. I mean, like, you know, my sister went to school with you. Like, and she knew who I was and we had great conversation. But again, at the time, this was early on, I didn't understand that she alone did not make that decision. You know, this guy, Will Packer, you may have heard him, he's a movie producer. Uh, he's, real, he's not as flamboyant as, as a lot of these other people, but he's a big time mo movie and television producer now. And I went down, I met with him, we had a great meeting, liked each other a lot. I knew everything that there was about his pictures and you know, and he didn't want to do business with me because if I understood things right, I knew he had a partner. His partner was, Will was the producer, his partner was the director. I needed to meet with them both. And I did just, just met with Will, so it didn't happen. Hell, Regina King, an actress, you know, she's in the, the new cowboy movie now. You know, uh, I went to Regina King's house. I met in her living room on the floor with her and her sister, and it's all good, all nice and cozy and wonderful. But she had an undying loyalty to the person she was working with even though he wasn't as good as me. <laughs> but she was loyal to him no matter what. There's nothing I could do about it. Again, you just pick up and keep moving. You know, I, it never affects me, never changes my course of my day. You just keep on, everybody's not gonna say yes. You've been um, marketing for a few years. A lot of years. Yeah, yeah I, was, I was trying to be polite. <laughs> Um, today, if I were to have an interview or something like that, I could easily Google people or look at someone's LinkedIn or just check out articles they've done. How did you do research on people well, before the internet made everyone's everything public? When you go on LinkedIn, you see a person, it, tell, it sends you similar names, all right? Uh, you can look at those names. You may know somebody. Uh, you, may, you may know somebody else in that company. You know, if you're out there enough, you'll know somebody that knows somebody. You know, I always tell people like, in the sports and entertainment business, if I've got to make more than three calls to find out who you are, you're nobody. But again, you want your name to be out there, the people to know who you are, and you want to dig deep. I mean, you know, it's, it's you know, I don't know the exact same answer to give you other than getting out there and seeing who are all the people that are around that person. And, you know, that could include family. You know, sometimes you want to find out that that person uh, likes particular sports teams or uh, is a dance aficionado or whatever. You find out all the little things that you need. So when you actually have a conversation with that person, if you can get in front of them, you can speak intelligently about who they are and, they, and let them know who you are. Good evening. My name is Stephanie White Stroud. I'm a school social worker at Weekway High School. Um, I come from the background of community organizing and planning. And one of the things that um, I like to do is empower the students. Um, some of um, 
the, uh, I would call the young uh, people's entrepreneur programs get kind of overlooked by a lot of our, our staff. And um, do you know of any programs and, um, <clears throat> that might be great for young people to start marketing themselves since they're on the pulse of Instagram and Twitter? Uh, I couldn't necessarily tell you off the top of my head. Um, I know that in the South Ward of Newark, there are a number of things. I know Altariq White runs a, a men's program. Um, by the way, I shouldn't be talking to you the week way. I went to Shabazz, so I really, <laughs> you know, I shouldn't talk to you until after Thanksgiving. <laughs> yeah, you know, but but uh, I know there there are a number of programs in the, in the South Ward, and I I like. Al Tariq White's program in particular, uh, and but he can probably refer you to other programs that are out there. Even though, he, yeah, we play. So um, you've done some work in the music and entertainment industry, and it's known to be pretty selective and competitive and very creative. But what advice would you have for people going into those same industries where well-paying jobs aren't exactly promised, or even jobs in general? It helps to be around um, people in the industry. I can tell you one of the things that I did was run a music industry conference for over 10 years. And we had people that came to that conference uh, who were loyal, who were not a part of the business, who wanted to be a part. And they were loyal, they kept you know, coming and you got to know them and they ended up with a, a number of different executive positions uh, at, uh, different record music companies and labels and things like that. You also had artists who were trying to make it and kept coming, Jill Scott, for example, uh, D'Angelo, uh, for example, artists that came and we broke them, both end up being clients of mine also, but still people knowing who you are, don't accept that it's automatic that the door is shut in my face. Don't accept that as an automatic happening or, or thing to be. Accept that, let me find out where they go. Because where they go, if I can go there and just be around them, ask questions, get to know them, and continue and keep doing it, eventually good things are going to happen. Early on in your career, when did you know that you wanted to do what you do now? What inspired you at that time to do that? Different times, different things happened. When I was a student at Montclair, uh, I knew that I had to ultimately get a job. Uh, and so, and my friend, by the way, Brenda was a student with me at Montclair, uh, uh, was a good friend, you know, but I, I knew then. So, uh, you know, I, I got involved in the cooperative education program uh, at the time, and I was able through co-op to get a job at the IRS. Uh, then, you know, my plan started to take shape because I knew I wanted to be a CPA. I knew I had to work in public accounting. So. You know, things like that were part of my initial plan and they happened, you know, and it just so happened that I really ultimately wanted to work in corporate is, is what I thought at the time. So I got the job at Columbia Pictures and now not only I was in corporate, but I was in the sports and entertainment business. So things kind of sometimes happen for you to help steer your way. Once I was in that business, you know, it was easy to maneuver within that environment. So and I knew it was something that I liked, you know, so. You know, but it, it, things, you have a plan. Like I said before, I have a plan, but along the way, don't be surprised when life helps formulate what your real plan is. And one thing that I learned about working in corporate America is that uh, I ultimately would like to work for myself. You know, and that, that all was a part of what happened with me. I just have a second part to that question, though. You talked about social media. Social media sometimes gets a bad rap when you're out on the social media. How can you use social media to your advantage to increase your value and to make a positive image out in social media? Well, I have friends right now that uh, utilize LinkedIn and YouTube and do these videos uh, that, that highlight their expertise or their opinions on certain situations. And I think they're very, very good. We got a friend that does stuff on music publishing. We got another friend that's an entertainment attorney that does things uh, on entertainment law. And they, they highlight who they are, uh, what their expertise is, and what their opinion is about different situations. Do it professionally. I guess it was the point I was trying to make earlier. Do it professionally, and good things will come to you. 
because people get on the internet, especially on YouTube, and you, boom, it pops up. If you look at certain industries on LinkedIn, boom, it pops up. I can't tell you uh, what happens with Facebook or the other Twitter or the other stuff because I don't really deal with that. Um, I don't do anything that can come back and end up being a negative representation of me. Um, after leaving like university, what would you say is like your biggest challenge in trying to effectively market yourself? And do you think, and like, what do you think of like the biggest challenge like my generation might face after leaving university to effectively market ourselves? I don't know if I could answer that question. I don't know if I can answer the first part of the question because I never looked at anything uh, as being a challenge. My biggest challenge was actually getting a job. Once that happened, you know, everything else fell in place. Uh, I would say, I would say now, you guys coming through now, same thing is that getting recognized uh, for your knowledge and expertise in your particular field is going to be your biggest challenge. And I've tried to give you some steps to be able to do that. But I think that's, that's the thing that you want to do. Uh, people don't want uh, somebody that's a one in a hundred. You know, they want number one or number two. You know, so getting yourself exposed uh, in, the, in the area that you want to be, I think, is, is your biggest challenge. Okay, one more. So do you mind one more? Sure. Okay. Thank you again for your ambition and your hustle in the industry. What advice would you have for us as far as any regrets or don't do's or anything that you would tell us to avoid right now in our time when it comes to looking for a career? I'm just moving to the next step. Don't waste time. Don't waste your time. Don't waste anybody else's time. You know, figure it out. Figure out what you want to do, where you want to go. But don't waste a whole lot of time getting there. You know, uh, I think that's that's the big challenge because a lot of people sit around procrastinating. I don't really know what I want to do and I don't want this. Well, we don't want to figure it out for you. Figure it out for yourself. And don't waste my time. You come sit in front of me, I, you know, know something. If you have nothing to talk about, hell, we'll talk about sports. You know, uh, uh, you know, we'll talk about that movie I saw. But after that, do I really want to talk to you about anything? Not really. Don't waste time. Don't waste your time. Don't waste my time. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh.